Hello guys, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This is actually a series of tutorials on computer terminologies for high performance computing. In these tutorials, I'll be explaining guys some basic terminologies and some background information that you have to keep in mind while working with uh, scientific computation and high performance computing, which are related. Okay. And uh, now the last two last few tutorials, we'll be looking at some of the basic uh, some basic outline architecture of how uh, processes look like. And now let's go into some of the details of what a processor might have and stuff. Like we're not going to do, we're not going to uh, you know talk about all of them, but just a few important stuff. Like just a few important stuff. And one of them is register. Now, what is a register is as follows. Now, what is a register is as follows. It's like a flag. It's like a flag or a memory memory that the processor is currently looking at. Now, here's the thing. Now, uh, let me go to your screen over here. See, let's take a single, uh, let's take a, for sake of convenience, let's take a single core, single threaded processor, which has uh, a control unit, a memory unit, and then uh, arithmetic logical unit. A register, which is given over here, okay, what it does, it does, it just has, it just store, it just uh, keeps in mind the flag uh, of the memory unit that is being accessed that is being accessed sometimes what happened is that the register unit itself is register unit I mean re memory unit and the register units are you know they merge together so they are sometimes register memory unit are also called as registers okay all are also called as registers and what they do they they behave like a register they just know be, behave they just uh, you know store memory for the control unit and arithmetic logic unit to do some operations and, and a super fast pace. Now here's the thing, your processor, I mean your control unit, arithmetic logic unit and memory units are super fast. Okay, uh, very, very, very fast. So what happens is that a register will, is, is again very, very fast memory, super fast memory. So what happens is that it will just store a small amount of information, okay, that the processor will be doing at that instant. Okay, let's say if you're doing an addition and add addition and sub addition operation. Okay, now when you break it down to the machine level code, machine level code, now there will be a lot of instructions like fetch this data from this memory, keep it to the register, okay, keep it inside the register, fetch that data from some other memory, keep uh, bring it to the register, you uh, pass these values to the arithmetic adder in the arithmetic logic unit, and that's the adder operation, bring it back to the register, send it to the RAM. So on and so forth. Now, in all these cases, what happens is that you know the, the control unit will be processing on some memory in the some memory in some memory. And what happens is that instead of fetching all the data from the laptop from your you know hard disk and your RAM again and again and again, okay, again and again and again, which will take a lot of time. What if we just have a small memory unit? What if you, have, you just have a small memory unit which is which which goes with the same speed as that of control unit, and that is what register does. Okay, it just has a part where uh, which which stores which memory it is being accessing in the in from the RAM, which memory which byte it's accessing from the RAM, and it also stores the value and keeps it over here. Since the memory since the control unit is super fast. Register register values get rewritten or overwritten, and they just uh, you know they uh, they get they the value they just store value for a very short time and they clean up and wipe up at very fast very quickly. Okay, so since the data so the la the data flow to the registers and the data inflow and outflow will be very very large and very very large. Okay, so that's about that's about registers. This is the fastest memory of all, and this is actually the memory of your. Uh, processor. So this is, uh, this is this is this works with the same speed as that of your processor. Okay. And now now let's next uh, look at cache. Now what cache is as follows. Now what cache is as follows. Now cache now cache is like uh, is is it's, it's like a smaller version of your RAM. It is it is a super fast memory for the processor, but you know it's not as fast as a register. So now uh, let me close this. We don't need this. Okay. Here's the thing. Now here's the thing. Now your RAM is super big. Okay, your RAM is super big, and your register is your register is small over here. Okay, your cache uh, behaves in between. Now, 
One way to visualize this is as follows. Let's say you have some money in your hand. Okay, money in your hand. Okay, and then you have some money in your wallet, and then you have money in your bank. So, so in that, if you were to give that example, your RAM is like your bank. Your RAM is like your bank. Your cash, your cash is like a wallet. Wallet, and then your register, register memory is like what you have in hand. What do you have in hand? In your hand, you cannot have more. You cannot have more money because it may not be safe. You might fall down or something, and you're not going to use it very often. You're just going to use. You're just going to keep in your hand only. You're just going to have your money in your hand only when you know performing an actual transaction, right? Like that. So that's what. That's how register is. So in that case, the registers hold just a short amount of uh, information, right? Just like that. I mean, just like how you just keep only a small amount of money in your hand. Okay, register just handle a small amount of mem uh, memory, store small amount of memory, give it, and then it remains free. Okay, whereas your cash is like a, a wallet, wherein which stores a lot of which which is slightly bigger than your register and stores a lot more uh, information, and it's um, and and the uh, number of times you take uh, number of transactions between cash and memory unit is small is larger when compared to the um, number of times you just uh, do the do the I mean take my take data from ram and cash instance for instance like let's say you have a lot of money in your bank you won't be ta taking the money in from your bank to your wallet like several times you just do it once once in a while right and then from your ca from your wallet you might take a lot of money and then uh, you know uh, do and then give it give it to people Give to people for if you go for a dinner or pay for your bus or something like that. So the number of operations between here will be larger, right? Will be larger, right? Whereas here the number of operations will be smaller. Transaction will be smaller. So what it does is that instead of instead of you know instead of ha taking all the data from the all the data from the RAM all the time, if you just have a intermediate memory like this cache, okay, then the number of uh, transaction and waiting period between taking money. I mean, so taking the information from RAM to back is all is avoided. That's what cache does. Cache is nothing but an intermediate uh, memory, intermediate fast memory device, you know, which uh, helps to you know reduce the time lag between the memory uh, time lag between memory fetching and memory retrieval. Okay, that's a, that's about cache. So you have to keep in you have to keep in mind that uh, you have to keep in mind that when compared to a register. When compared to a register, a register is like eight to sixty-four bits long, depending on which kind of a processor you're using. When compared to a register, a cache has to be a little more bigger, because because it's quite logical. Because uh, the cache will just have the cache memory will just have uh, more contents, more contents, and these contents will be referred very very quickly in your registers. Okay, and uh, when compared to your cache, the RAM will have more contents, and you're just going to switch once. You're just going to you know refer to the ca RAM for certain value only once in a while. When compared to that, you're going to refer the mem data from your cache to your memory unit much often. So cache has to have uh, more memory when compared to your register, but less memory when compared to the RAM because because cache can extract uh, information from RAM very quickly. Very quickly. On the other hand, the amount of time it takes for the memory unit to access the data from the RAM will be larger, so it's better for the cache to have less memory than the RAM and more memory than your register, and that's how it is. Okay, and all of them, uh, the time it takes for the data to you know process between uh, uh, register and cache, cache and RAM, they go in mission cycles per second. Okay, I like uh, did go in mission cycles, and I'll explain that in some in some other video in in a future video, like how much time it takes and all. Okay. Okay. Now that's the that's your little bit information about your cache and RAM. I mean, sorry, your register and cache. And uh, actually, there are different levels of cache, and uh, you no, know, there are some terminals regarding cache, like cache line and cache miss, which I'll explain you guys next tutorial. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.